Welcome back to C Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This time we're going to learn how to use file paths. Before we get started reading and writing files, we need to understand paths and the difference between absolute and relative path. An absolute path is a complete path to a specific location, meaning we have all of the details we need to find something on a file system. So for this example, we're saying in drive C, in the folder test, we have testfile1.txt. Absolute paths are very easy to read at a glance because you know exactly where you expect something to be. However, they take more considerations because they are specific locations. While it is easy to validate an absolute path on your own machine, it's very risky to assume that all of your future users will have the same path. Your users might want their files stored in a different drive, or if your application is cross-platform and you're using Linux, you wouldn't have a drive letter at all. And these are just a couple of things to consider when using an absolute path. A relative path is exactly that. It is relative to something else. And in our case, it is relative to our executable. So wherever our program is running from is going to be where our path begins. So if we specify a path that is only a file name, and then we create a file with that path, with this executable, it's going to be in the same directory as our executable. So if we right click our project, open folder in File Explorer, and then we go to our bin, debug, net6 folder, our executable is here. So when this runs, if our path is test file 2 and we create a file, it's going to show up right here alongside this executable because it is relative to the directory where this runs from. And since we used a relative path, the absolute path of this folder doesn't matter anymore. The user could have the executable wherever they like on their file system, and the file that you create with a relative path will be relative to their system. When using a relative path, you do not have to stay in the same directory. By using dot dot slash in your path, you can go one folder up from your executable. So if we're in this directory where our executable is, and we use dot dot slash file name, we are going to go up a directory and our file would be saved here. So if we said dot dot slash dot dot slash, we would go up two folders from our directory. So then from where our executable is, we would go up, up, and our file would be saved here. And likewise, we could add a folder like this, and we would go back from our executable twice, then into a folder, and then where our file would be saved. So we would be in debug net, our executable would be here. So then we would go up, up to bin, and then it would be saved in a folder called folder, and our file would be saved here. So everything is relative to the executable, but you can use dot dot slash to go up a folder from that executable. Now something very important to keep in mind. Now we're using this dot dot slash to navigate backwards in our file system. With our example, we're in our bin debug net six folder, but this is our debug environment. We have folders that we can predictably navigate back through. If your user moved their executable to say their root drive, then they wouldn't have any folders to navigate back to. And this path would throw an exception because these folders didn't exist. If your application has an installer that installs itself into say program files with a very specific folder structure, you're reducing the risk of doing this, but you're still creating a scenario that if the user goes and manually moves some files around, they could still break your application. Now this last example is the same as the first one. We are starting at the same directory as our executable, except this time we are going into a new directory before we get to our file. So if we're starting here, then we would be going into a folder called test files, and then test file four would be right here. Pathing from your executable forward into different folders is a lot safer than pathing backwards or up because you know that your executable lives in a directory and you can validate or create directories that you need in the same directory or in subdirectories. Now keep in mind, even though some of these have more caveats than others, all of these are valid ways to use paths. You need to pick what's correct for your situation. And while we'll get to more in and outs of complex paths later, I think this is enough information to get you started making smart decisions in your code. 
Next up, we're going to talk about the directory class and how to use it to create and validate directories on our file system. So thanks for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you. Happy coding, and until next time, as always, take care.